<laughs> well, hey, 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 how you doing there? Scott Wilkinson here, the home theater geek, filling in for Leo Laporte, the tech guy. You know, we got a couple of visitors in the studio today, uh, Mark and Aya. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'll remember that by the end of the show, I'm sure. And Mark asked me a really interesting question that uh, is very basic but really important. And we started to touch on it in the last hour uh, when we were talking about pre-pros or preamp processors. And he asked me, I don't really understand what an AVR is, what an AV receiver is. And this is a great question. Uh, because it's a fundamental aspect of all home theaters, really. Uh, so the AV receiver is simply a combination of a preamp processor, which, as I said before, takes in all your source devices and gets the signal in and, and does what it needs to do with that signal, and then sends it to the power amplifiers, which are in the same box, and the power amplifiers make the audio signal bigger, and send that onto the speakers. And so it really is the central switching station and power source of, of the entire home theater. It powers the speakers, it takes in the signals, does what it does with them, amplifies them, sends them out to the speakers. Um, and that's what an AVR is, and that's what it does. And most home theaters, that's what they use as their central piece of equipment. You can separate those two things, which is kind of what we were talking about in the last hour, where you have a preamp processor and a separate box of amplifiers. That's generally more expensive, generally higher quality. Generally, I'm talking very generally here. Um, and... As you amplifiers don't change much over time, you know they're they're just amplifying. That's all they're doing. They're make, taking an electrical signal and making it bigger. Uh, and so, but preamp processors will change over time. You, we've got new surround formats. We've got uh, all kinds of new technologies and features and so on. That if you have an uh, AVR. If you want to replace it with something that has all those new features, you're going to replace those amps as well. And it's kind of wasted money, in my opinion. So if you can, if you separate those out, this is, this is what we often call separates, uh, then you can replace the preamp processor when a new technology comes out that you really want. Keep your amps because they still work just fine. There's no, nothing's going to change there. And, uh, and there's, then you have all the latest and greatest without having to give up the amps in the previous AVR, buy a new set of amps. You don't need to spend that kind of money. Now, granted, uh, preamp processors by themselves tend to be a little on the expensive side because uh, they're, they're generally considered to be a, a sort of higher-end product. Uh, but, you know, if you buy amps and you really like them, then, then you're keeping them. The other interesting thing to do is to buy powered speakers. If you, There are these things called active speakers or powered speakers, which have the amplifier built into the box of the speaker. Then all you really need is a pre-pro, what we call a pre-pro, a preamp processor. And that will send what's called a line level signal out to the speakers directly, and the speakers will amplify their, their own signal. That's a kind of a more specialized approach some people do it. And in fact, on the Screensavers, which is uh, the podcast that I will be guest hosting uh, later this afternoon, we're going to be talking with Tony Grimani, uh, who has a new set of speakers that are powered, that have this exact same approach, that they put the amplifier inside the speaker so that you don't have to worry about where the amp goes or anything like that. There's also some uh, thought to the fact that if you put the amplifiers in with all the electronics, the pre-processing electronics, uh, you have to be pretty careful about how you shield things, right? Because amplifiers make a big signal, and that will make a big electromagnetic field within this box, and that might interfere with certain things. So if you separate them out, you're, you're lowering the risk of, of separating them out. So that is my uh, short little bit about... AV receivers. You know, before we go on, I should tell you that uh, 
uh, in a slightly self-serving manner, I should say, that my day gig is uh, as the editor of audio uh, avsforum.com. Audio Video Science is what AVS stands for. And this is the world's largest online community of audio video enthusiasts, or what we might call geeks. And... Um, I am very pleased and happy and honored and privileged to be the editor of that forum. Now, I don't go in and edit forum posts. You know for what a forum is, right? It's a users getting together and chatting with each other, asking questions, answering questions, and so on. And uh, this, this AVS forum started in 1999, and it has grown to over a million members. So it's huge, and I can't possibly, you know, read everything that's on there. Uh, but what I do is provide what's called editorial content. So as a professional journalist, I've been for close to 30 years, all told, uh, I write reports from trade shows and CES and CEDIA and various things like that. And I write articles about various things. And uh, my colleague Mark Henninger and I uh, both do that. And Ralph Potts writes reviews of Blu-rays. And his reviews are very, very good, I think, because not only does he review the movie itself, he also reviews the audio and video quality of the Blu-ray. So this is really cool because audiophiles certainly do this. They have certain selections that they play for their friends, and they say, listen to how great my system is. Similarly, with a Blu-ray, you can find certain Blu-rays that have great sound quality, great picture quality, and say, look, look at how great my home theater is uh, with certain demo discs that are that are really cool. So uh, I've, I value Ralph Potts's uh, movie reviews tremendously for that regard.